Hello, VC. Hello, good people. Welcome back to Blue Sky Vinyl. So, as promised on my last video the other day, my uh, introductory video, uh, I thought I would tackle these uh, this Blues Tag 2019. Yes, the new guy. Late to the party. Mm-hmm. But better late than never. Wrote them down, so I'm going to try and uh, get through this uh, fairly quickly. I'm trying try not to drone on too much. There'll be plenty of time for droning on, you know, when we get to the good stuff. But for now, let's hop to it here. Best find of 2018. Uh, this is going to be slightly skewed to blues and jazz, but not exclusively. There's a lot of uh, classic rock and uh, stuff like that in my collection too. But, uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of blues in this. So, you know, hence... Blues Guy Vinyl. So, without further ado, um, Sun House. Uh, the legendary father of folk blues, Sun House. Uh, this is an original pressing on Columbia. Nice stuff. Uh, the cover's a little worn, uh, a little beat up, but what's, the, what's that old saying? You don't play the cover, you play the record. And the record is minty, minty fresh. Beautiful. Um, I was pretty happy to find that because I already had the re the repressing of it, the reissue of it. So when I came across that at uh, records at uh, Recordland in Calgary, actually, I think I knocked over a couple of displays because I was literally jumping for joy. I was having fits of joy. Uh, anyway. So, moving along here, Vinyl Community Channel Shoutouts. Well, pretty new around here, but there's a couple of channels that um, I just want to say hello to some of the guys. There's, uh, I believe his name is Jonathan, a cheap and cheerful record collector. Um, I kind of dig that guy's channel, you know, because he's kind of an older kind of a guy, kind of like me, a little long in the tooth. And we have very similar um, sort of tastes or interests when it comes to to our collection by the looks of it. Uh, he likes a lot of classic rock and blues and jazz, so can't go wrong with that. I enjoy that very much. Uh, there's tons of other channels out there, and I, you know, because I'm kind of a new guy, I've, I've been watching a lot of videos in the past uh, few weeks, but to be honest, um, uh, I don't think I'm at a point yet where I could recommend that another channel needs more views and more subs, considering I'm just arrived, I'm a new arrival, so, so I just want to give a shout out to uh, Cheap and Cheerful. Oh, and also um, Naz Nomad, who's a fellow Canadian, another crazy Canuck like myself, and he lives in Alberta as well. He lives up in Edmonton, and I'm down here in Calgary, so eh, put up your dukes. It's kind of a local rivalry thing there. Uh, next question. What holes are you looking to fill in your collection? Whew, wow. Um... I'm looking to fill a lot of Howlin' Wolf, uh, first issues, first pressings, uh, through chess. And if I can get some Howlin' Wolf uh, 78s, 78 RPM shellac platters on chess, that would be great. I'm a huge Howlin' Wolf fan. He's probably my favorite bluesman. Um, I've got some Rolling Stones. Uh, there's a few albums in there that I want to pick up. And also uh, The Cult. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of The Cult. And there's a few of their albums that I'm missing as well. So that's going to be the task at hand for 2019. Uh, let's see here. Uh, question number four. Cheap album. That's really good. Man, you cannot go wrong. Deep Purple. Deep as Purple. Their greatest hits. You know, you could pick this up pretty much anywhere. Uh, you know, uh, you can pick up one in new condition, basically, at any vinyl store for, you know, five Four or five bucks. And if you dig through some of the uh, Sally Ann's or Goodwill stores or secondhand stores, you can probably scare up a copy of this for a buck or two. It's a great album. Um, it's got a little bit of everything from the first few albums uh, because it is a compilation. But uh, you know, you get Ian Gillian. So, you know, David Coverdale, eh, not so worried about David Coverdale, but you get Ian Gillian. So, that's, that's a great album for a great price. You could find that everywhere. Uh, favorite side project? Um, I kind of went a little differently on this one as opposed to a favorite side, side project for, from an artist. I went for favorite side project of uh, a record label. And that would be the Chess Records, their uh, Checker, their Cadet Concept albums. 
Uh, they did a couple of these. They did uh, Electric Mud, Muddy Waters, which uh, Muddy and a lot of other people hated at the time. And they did uh, this one, the Howlin' Wolf's album. This is a reissue from 2011, I believe, um, on Get On Down. Get On Down! So that's a, that's a, that's a great record. And the Electric Mud, also from Muddy Waters, is a great uh, cadet concept on Checker. And that was a, a little bit of a brainchild of Marshall Chess. Uh, uh, Leonard and Phil Chess were the original owners of Chess Records. Uh, Leonard's son Marshall took over uh, parts of the business for a while. And this was sort of his brainchild, this uh, cadet concept. And basically what they did was they brought in uh, Pete Cozy and a bunch of guys that played with you know, a lot of jazz greats, and uh, they had these guys kind of lay down a, a funky, sort of a psychedelic sort of a feel, and then uh, they had the Wolf or, or Mud, depending on the album, come in and lay new vocal tracks of a lot of their original stuff um, over these this new sort of funkified blues. And uh, at the time, everybody hated it, but now a lot of people are starting to come around in the past few years and say, you know what, this is actually really cool. So there you go, Cadet Concept. Uh, checker from, from Chess Records. Number six, song from an artist or a band that is uncharacteristic. Um, I had a little bit of a tough time with this one, but I decided to go with uh, Jack White. And this is his acoustic recordings, 1998, 1998 to 2016. It's a beautiful album. Uh, it's, of course, on his own label. The presentation on it is very nice, you know, uh, beautiful marketing on it. And what kind of made this uncharacteristic or a little different is because, I mean, obviously Jack White's a fantastic guitar player. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But this is acoustic stuff. This is all of his stuff like, uh, you know, Blunderbuss and, uh, you know, you name it, all the White Stripe stuff, but it's all done acoustically. So again, it's Jack White on guitar, but he's not wailing away on the electric guitar with the whammy bars and all the crazy effects and uh, the feedback and distortion. He's just taking it cool and easy, acoustic style. So that's that one there for you. It's a, it's a pretty good album, you know. Uh, Jack White, he's all right, you know. He's pretty good. Uh, number seven, last album purchased. Oh, actually, this one I just picked up. It was about two weeks ago or so. Uh, John Hammond, Jr., John Hammond Jr., live. Uh, this is on Rounder. Um, it's a beautiful record. And uh, I really like John Hammond Jr. Uh, he's been around for a long time. Uh, he was part of the sort of the folk blues revival from the late 60s. And he's had a huge career through the 70s and 80s. And uh, what I like about John Hammond Jr. is he's a pretty legit blues guy, you know. Um, he's a singer, songwriter, guitar player, plays harp. Um, and his father, actually, John Hammond Sr., was the one that originally organized the From Spirituals to Swing uh, at Carnegie Hall in the late 30s. And they tried to get Robert Johnson, and they found out that Robert Johnson had passed away, so they brought in Big Bill Brunsey instead. So that's a little bit of a legacy there of John Hammond Jr. from his old man. That's a great album. Number eight, a great album with a bad cover. So this one I've had in my collection for, for quite a while. Um, again, I'm a huge Howl Wolf fan. He's my favorite bluesman. And this one here, this is on uh, Syndicate Chapter. It's a British import. And it's, it's, a, um, it's a compilation album. It's kind of a greatest hits. It's got some of his early Memphis stuff when he was at uh, recording for Sam Phillips over at Sun Records. And then it's got a lot of his uh, stuff from when he went up to Chicago Chess Records. Now, it's a great sounding album. It's got all of the hits that you would want from Helen Wolf. But the cover is just terrible. I mean, it's just a, it's a mishmash of all kinds of random pictures of some guy, some jockey on a horse, some car. And they even just cut out the photo of the wolf from the back of the cover and just randomly stuck it in one of these car windows. It's kind of a gross orange color. I don't know. It's... A great album, but it just looks ugly as hell. So there's that one for you. And number nine, uh, a bad album with a cool cover. Um, I don't have a lot of bad albums, but this one is bad. Very bad. Um, I've, and I picked it up because 
he's quite well known to me, this artist. This is Luther Allison. He's a great Chicago bluesman. And I liked the cover. It's kind of a cool sort of a painting style of cover. You could really see, you know, the artist did like sweat pouring off of him. And you could really see from his face the passion uh, that he's feeling when he's playing blues, a little bit of his guitar there. It's a really, really excellent looking cover, I think. It kind of speaks to exactly what the blues is all about. But the album itself, it's just terrible. It's not very bluesy. It doesn't have that good, hard-driving Chicago blues sound that he's known for. It's very sappy. It's almost like a bunch of romantic love songs. Uh, and, you know, I'll admit, uh, it's my own fault. I didn't really take a listen to it. I just saw it and picked it up because you look on the back and there's songs that he covers from Ray Charles and Mac Rubinek, who's Dr. John, uh, Little Milton. Uh, there's a song that he does written by Willie Nelson. I mean, these are great song songwriters, but um, he kind of strays from his usual Chicago hard driving blues sound and gets into this real sappy romantic stuff. So it's, uh, it's a cool looking album, but not a, not a good album at all. Which brings us to number 10, blues album. I could have just shown my entire c collection, really, on this one. But I decided to go with what was my favorite blues album of, of this past year, of 2018. And that's Mr. Mr. Buddy Guy. The blues is alive and well. This is a fantastic album. You can't really ask for a better modern Chicago blues album. And nobody does it better than Mr. Buddy Guy. Uh, and again, a beautiful gatefold album with a bunch of prints. And um, he's got a lot of classic stuff on here and some new stuff. And you know what? He's got uh, Jeff Beck on here with him. Keith Richards. Uh, he's got uh, Mick Jagger on here. So, I mean, how can you go wrong? Buddy Guy and Jeff Beck and Keith Richards and Mick Jagger. Excellent, excellent album. Definitely worth picking up. So that's, the, uh, that's my blues album. Number 11, Earworm Song. You know, that was, that was an easy one for me and an interesting story behind that. Um, at work, we listen to satellite radio. And uh, when I'm working on my shift, I put it on the, uh, the blues satellite station. And there's a song that comes up in the rotation a lot. It's called Lucky Lips by Ruth Brown. And Ruth Brown is, um, she's been around since the 50s and she was going until the 70s. And she's sort of like the female version of a blue shouter. You know, you may have heard of guys like Big Joe Turner. Well, Ruth Brown was sort of the, the female equivalent of a Big Joe Turner. And she did this song called Lucky Lips. And uh, the horn section is, catches you with a hook. And uh, the, the, uh, all the verses and the chorus, it just hooks you in. And once you hear the song, it's stuck in your head. And that's what happened to me. I heard it at work on the satellite radio and it stuck in my head. So much so that I had to order it. So I just ordered the single. This is the uh, 45 RPM. And this is a repress on uh, Atlantic. It's part of their oldies series. But Ruth Brown, Lucky Lips. Once you get that in your head, you're not going to get that out of there. You're going to have to pour gasoline in your ears or something to get it out. Historically, uh, number 12, Historically Important Artist. And I went with Big Bill Brunzi. And the reason I went with Big Bill Brunzi is because he's one of the first highly successful um, and commercially successful bluesmen that uh, did extensive tours overseas in Europe. And he went uh, quite early, just after World War II, actually, in the early mid-50s. Uh, he went over to England, France, Germany, Belgium, uh, Holland, and uh, he toured quite extensively, extensively over there and did some recordings over there. And he was a, a huge influence in a lot of the guys that would later on bring the blues back to the U.S. as part of the British invasion. So he influenced, uh, you know, a young uh, Bill Wyman, for example, and young Paul McCartney's. And all of these guys um, really owe a, a huge debt to a guy like Big Bill Brunzi. So I've got a couple of Big Bills here. This is on chess, Big Bill with Washboard Sam. And this is the best of Big Bill Brunzi, 1935 to 1941. So, Big Bill Brunzi, unsung hero. Uh, album you own because of your parents. I was pretty lucky because uh, my parents had me when they were pretty young. They were in their early 20s, and so they were really, still really into music. They were into, you know, Rolling Stones and Beatles and Queen and uh, uh, all kinds, you name it. And one of the albums that I remember my parents putting on quite a bit when I was a kid was Rod Stewart. Every picture tells a story. 
And uh, this isn't their copy. This is my copy. And I was lucky enough to find this at a record shop. It's uh, first pressing on Mercury. The Mercury label. I don't know if you can see that. The lighting's not that great here. Sorry, I'll remedy that down the road. But it's a fantastic album. Um, you know, a nice gatefold. And it's 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 got everything you're going to want from uh, from classic Rod Stewart. You know, Maggie May, Mandolin Wind. And he's got Ronnie Wood playing guitars on all the songs. So, a great album. Uh, let me see here. Number 14, Best Dollar Bin, fi dollar bin Find of 2018. I had a couple, actually. Um, some of them were truly a dollar, and a couple of them were two dollars. So I'm going to cheat and throw in all of them. The first one, this was a dollar. And this is Leon Redbone. And um, I like... It's um, on the track, Leon Redbone. And I really like... Leon Redbone, actually. I like his vocal stylings. I think he's kind of cool, and I like how he's sort of tried to revive this whole uh, sort of bluegrass and old-timey type stuff. So, you know, on here it's got, uh, you know, Ain't Misbehaving and Lazy Bones and Polly Wally Doodle. I like Leon Redbone, and for a dollar, can't go wrong, really. There's a couple of other ones that I picked up. These were in a $2 bin. Now this is uh, great, or sax greats, Stan Getz, Coleman Hawkins, Ben Webster, fantastic album. Uh, this one is on Everest Records uh, out of Los Angeles, California. That was two bucks, and uh, as I'm a huge lover of jazz just as much as blues, so I picked this one up as well. This is Sweets, Lips, and Lots of Jazz, and this was two dollars as well. Uh, this is on Xanadu, which I believe is also out of L.A., if I'm not mistaken. Nope, sorry, it's out of New York City. My bad. But uh, this is a great album. Uh, this is just sort of uh, the pre-war stuff, 1941, 42, uh, so prior to Bebop and all of that. And it's Hot Lips Page. He steals the show. He steals that album. Uh, so it's a great, great find for $2. Uh, number 15, favorite double album. I had a tough time with this one because I have quite a few double albums. A lot of them are blues, uh, soul, uh, classic rock. So I'm going to cheat and go with two. Uh, the first one is uh, Ray Charles, A Man and His Soul. And this is uh, first pressing. It's a mono pressing, actually, on ABC Records. See there. Sorry, I know it's not showing up very well, but uh, this is a this was a great find. And it's beautifully packaged, fantastic gatefold. Um, it's got um, it's got a booklet built into the album as well, with a little bit of a story and lots of lots of great Ray Charles photos, black and white photos, a nice glossy paper. Um, fantastic album. And the other ones. Um, that's kind of my favorite double album as well, is uh, Credence Clearwater Chronicle. Um, a compilation album, but Credence. Need I say more? Credence. Uh, number 16, album you learned about from the vinyl community. Like I said earlier in this video, uh, I've been around for a couple of weeks or so watching a lot of different videos, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who I heard this from. It may have been uh, Cheap and Cheerful's channel, but the band. Uh, this is a reissue of the band's album. It's got a beautiful sort of a textured cover on it. Again, fantastic gatefold with a lot of great pictures, um, 180 gram vinyl. Just a beautiful, beautiful record. And, you know, you can't go wrong with the band. I mean, Levon Helm, Robbie Robertson. Just a fantastic album. Uh, what are we at here? I lost my place. Oh, uh, number 17, 10-inch record. Now, again, because I also collect a lot of 78s, uh, the shellac platters from the pre-war, you know, uh, 30s, 40s, even the 50s, really. I have a lot of 10-inch records. But I wanted to pull one out that was actually on vinyl. Um, and I've actually got two of them, and they're both lead belly. Uh, 
it's uh, it's a it was a two issue set issued um, the two years after he passed away. He passed away, I believe, in 1950. And Rock Island Line, number one, volume one, or sorry, volume two, Rock Island Line. Take This Hammer, Volume 1, was issued in 1951, and Rock Island Line, Volume 2, was issued in 1952, just after Lead Belly's death. So these are great, fantastic 10-inch vinyl albums. It's got, a, you know, all of his hits, Midnight Special, um, Good Night Irene, and all the songs that everybody's like, oh, I didn't know Lead Belly did that. Yeah, pretty much 40% of everything that you've heard, Lead Belly did it. Lead Belly did it. So that, that's the 10-inch uh, the records there. The 7-inch. This one I just picked up about three months ago. And it was another one that I'd been hearing on the satellite radio. And I loved the song. I'd, I'd heard it before, but I hadn't never really heard the whole thing. And I hadn't heard it in rotation a lot. But on the satellite radio, you got to love them. This is the Fenderman Mule Skinner Blues on Apex 45 RPM. This is a second pressing. This is a Canadian pressing. And um, I just love that song. It's a great song, Mule Skinner Blues. It's originally a Jimmy Rogers track, but the Fenderman covered it. I believe it was originally covered in 58, and I think that copies uh, 1960 Canadian pressing. But um, originally I thought it was uh, Buck Owens when I first heard it as a kid, but uh, I was wrong. And uh, what else we got here next? Favorite album to sleep to. That one's a no-brainer for me. That was an easy question. And that would be Miss Dinah Washington. And this one is called Mellow Mama. Uh, Dinah Washington is a beautiful, beautiful blues chanteuse, shall we say. A beautifully, uh, beautiful voiced, classic blues singer. Um, she really came into her own in the uh, 40s and 1950s. And what I like about this album is because it's... Um, it's a lot more of the mellow, sort of a jazzier type of vocal stylings that she often employed. And um, it's just a great album. It's, you know, Milt Jackson, Charles Mingus is on it, uh, Lucky Thompson's on it. And it's just a nice, beautiful, mellow sounding album. Um, you put that on and buy the third, fourth track. <laughs> You're just sawing logs, trust me. And let me see here. Uh, Oh, the last question. Not the last question already. Number 20. Uh, favorite vinyl community experience or advice for people making videos? Um, well, I have to say that uh, specifically here on YouTube with the vinyl community, my favorite experience has been just watching all of the videos and, and uh, really enjoying everybody sharing all of their knowledge. And I love the little stories, you know, when anybody has a neat little story, whether it was, it's a story about... Um, how they found that album or where they found it, or if it's a little bit of a tidbit of, uh, you know, those little golden nuggets about the artist or the recording sessions or, or um, the, the studio, uh, all of those neat little tidbits, those little stories are what I really like. And to me, that's what really illustrates perfectly the passion that all of us share for, for music and especially on vinyl. Um, and advice for people making videos, I would just say, you know what, just go ahead, just go ahead and uh, make the video. I mean, it doesn't have to be super polished, professionally, uh, you know, television studio quality. Uh, you know, just hook up your phone, hit record, and blah, 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 and show a few records, and away you go. Uh, you know, none of us are here to be movie stars. We're here to share our passions with one another, and that's the love of music and the love of vinyl. So, I think that's it. That's going to do it here for uh, my uh, 2019 vinyl tag on uh, Blues Guy Vinyl. So we're going to wrap it up. Thank you very much. And don't forget, keep digging and keep spinning. Thanks a lot, folks. Have a good one. See you. Take care. Bye-bye.